From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Good morning, Johnny. This is Carol. Oh, hi, Carol. Sleep well? Johnny, you were so quiet on the way back from the seance last night. I hope it's because Madame Morgana Morgana convinced you of her powers as a medium. Uh, how much did you pay her for that seance, Carol? A hundred dollars. A hundred? Want to meet me in the coffee shop downstairs for breakfast? I'd love to. Fifteen minutes? Fifteen minutes. Goodbye. Oh, and weren't you thrilled to hear the voice of your dead brother again? Yeah. Bye. Except that I never had a brother. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location New York City. To the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an accounting of expenses during my investigation of the matter of the medium. Well done. Expense account, item 18, 10 cents, phone call to Carol Sharp. Item 19, 10 cents, phone call to Sergeant Randy Singer. Hey, I thought you were coming down here to headquarters this a.m. It's nearly 10 o'clock. Soon as I've had some breakfast... Your lab get those films developed for me? They're working on them right now. And did you put a tail on David Sharp? Carol's brother? Yeah. I suppose you know he was over there in the neighborhood of that seance over in Jersey last night. I would have bet on it. Didn't you see him there? No. Well, that's funny. Just keep that tail on him. See you later. <laughs> Item 20, 1070. Long distance call to the city editor of the Mock Chunk Pennsylvania Herald Express. For a full half hour, I asked him questions about the Sharp family about one member of the family in particular. Then, item 21, 585, breakfast for Carol and myself in the coffee shop at the Swank Bell Towers. You must have been impressed, Johnny. You're so quiet. Would you like to see Madame Morgana Morgana again tonight? Johnny? Carol, I think we'll see her today. Oh, but she couldn't. She always says it takes a full day to recover from the shock and strain of a seance. She goes into a deep trance, you know, in order to make the spirits move those little trumpets about and speak through them. Listen, Carol. Yes? You have a brother, David. Oh, David. Why do you say it that way? He's not really a brother. He was just sort of taken in by mother when his parents died. I'd rather not speak of him, Johnny. The black sheep of the family, huh? Mother, mother insisted on taking care of him. He was only 12 or 13. I've forgotten. Father didn't want to, but he permitted it. Why didn't he want to? Because David's father had been a criminal, and his father before him, even David's mother was... And my father was afraid. Yeah, but blood would tell. Yes. Your father left money to him, along with the rest of you. Yes, he did. But not as much. And David has resented that. But no matter how much he had, he, he wouldn't have enough. His sports cars, the fast company. Johnny, how did you know about Listen, that? Listen, Carol, I'm an insurance investigator. What? I came down here to look into this matter of your wanting to change the beneficiaries of your policy to cut off your mother and brothers in favor of this medium and Tony Ricardo. Johnny, I hate you for this. Why didn't you... I didn't dare let you know until I found out a few things. This is the most... And I think I have. Including the fact that Madame Morgana Morgana, who persuaded you to make the change, is nothing but a clever fraud. No, that isn't true. And I'll prove She's it to a... you. If you'll call your boyfriend, Tony Ricardo... Tony... Take him down to the 18th Precinct Police Station where I'll be waiting for you. But Tony hasn't... You think because his father was a kind of gangster years In ago... In Tony's that... case, I hope blood won't tell. 18th Precinct, both of you. All right, Johnny, we will be there. <laughs> Johnny, a picture took last night. Oh, thanks, Randy. Hmm. Uh -huh. Hey, why'd you ever get the idea of using infrared light and infrared film? Anything else, anything that let them know I was taking pictures would have busted up the seance. Hey, look at this one. Yeah, you know, I'd like to publish those. Scare a lot of those phony psychics out of business and out of town. Oh, here's the one that I'd oh, like. Oh, Mr. Dollar, we're here. Hi, Dollar. Oh, hello, Tony. Miss Sharp, Mr. Ricardo, this is Sergeant Singer. How do you do? Hi. And now, will you please show us this proof you were talking about? Yes, Dollar. How did you make out, huh? Made out very well, Tony, thanks to a miniature flash camera I had tucked into my pocket last night. I guess you wondered, too, how Madame Morgana Morgana worked her record. He did not. Tony knows as well as I do that she's completely honest. Like any normal person, he may have questioned the almost miraculous powers of this woman in the beginning. 
but no trumped-up tricks that you... Where, where did you get this picture? And look at this one. Oh, she... She's moving that trumpet herself with a long kind of extended handles. Extension grip, they call it. She probably hid it in the front of her dress. Oh, no. But these pictures in that dark room... I... Infrared photography. Maybe she did use one trick. But the voices came from trumpets floating about in the air above yeah. our head. Then look at this one. Taken when your father was supposed to be speaking to you. Oh, no. That little trumpet has a long tube on it. Yep. Extending into that curtain doorway at the end of the room where somebody could whisper through it. Oh, this is terrible. And the hundreds, the thousands of dollars I gave her, believing in her. Yep. I'm afraid you were really took. Here. Here's where my dead brother, Richard, spoke to me. The hanging trumpet is over your head. Yep. But how could she know? I didn't tell her. Oh, yes, you mentioned your brother. A completely non-existent brother, Carol. Oh. Made up. Like the dream of you I told you about. And I believed you, too. But how could she find out all those things about me? Miss Sharp, a couple of nights ago, I took Mr. Dollar to a medium that was a bum compared to this one. And she told him all about himself. Have you forgotten what I found out about you and your brothers just in the last 24 hours? Oh, I... I don't know what to say. Don't try. We've still got to pin this whole thing down. I'm sure this Madame Morgana Morgana wasn't working alone. But who could be... How about it, Tony? No. No, not Tony. Just because his father was... Oh, no, please. Oh, thanks, darling. I got a report here, Johnny. Apparently he's moved again. And you guessed right. Yeah. Then we better get going. Can we use a prowl car? No, but we can get an escort as far as the city line. Then come on, all of you. The cabbie with his accelerator on the floor had a ball training our escort across town. And we had to hold him down when we finally reached the Jersey side. Randy Singer obviously had no authority over there. But as it turned out, I'm glad he came. When we pulled up to the home of Madame Morgana Morgana, I couldn't help noticing a Studebaker Golden Hawk sticking out from behind the house with a Pennsylvania license. I wasn't the only one to notice it. Johnny, that looks like David's car. I think it is. Come on. Hey, uh, Johnny, I'm out of my jurisdiction. Oh, yeah, maybe you better wait. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Johnny, I knew David was bad, but... Oh, I still can't believe it. I know how you feel, Carol, and I'm sorry. Mr. Dollar... Wait a minute. Johnny. Johnny, if you do a thing like this... I'm he'd... ready for anything. Look, Mr. Dollar, why don't just you and I go in? If anything happened to Carol, I'd never... Oh, Carol, dear. And Mr. Ricardo and Mr. Dollar. Hello, Madame Morgana. Do you mind if we come in? Why, no. I... But not for another meeting, of course. The strain of last night's convocation is still with me, I'm afraid. Yeah, maybe you ought to uh, up the price for your next seance. But there ain't gonna be no more. Mr. Dollar, I don't understand. Come on, Carol, Tony. We're going to look over that seance room in broad daylight. No, you can't. I I won't let you destroy the sanctity of that room. Oh, yes, you will. I'll lay it on the line to you, madam, whatever your name really is. This monkey business of yours has gone far enough. So this is the room. What terrible things you're saying. You take a thing like spiritualism that a lot of honest people believe in and make a dirty racket out of it. Carol, this man is mad. Make him leave this sacred place at once. Carol, what right have you to make such horrible implications? Implications? Those were accusations. Would you like to see how those spirits of yours move trumpets around in the dark? They couldn't be seen. And how those spirit voices suddenly appear out of thin air? Look at these pictures. Oh. How did you get these? I cannot tell a lie. I did it with my little camera. Well. All right. All right. You've exposed me. But there was nothing malicious about it. If you knew the solace, the comfort of mind and spirit these things have brought to the people who come to me. At a hundred bucks a crack, sometimes more. Why not? Carol has money. So have the others who come to me. Did you plan to make them all turn their insurance policies over to you? And then contrive to have them suddenly and unexpectedly join their immortal ancestors in the great beyond? No, no, that wasn't my idea. Oh, oh, I knew something like this might happen. It has happened. Now, where is he? He's... No. No, I, 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 I don't know what you're talking about. Your assistant, or colleague in crime would be a better word, who stood inside the curtain door of the seance room and made with the phony voices of the dead, who gave you all the information on Carol, 
who's probably done a nice little research job on me since my visit last night. Yes, Mr. Dollar. David. I know all about your activity as an insurance investigator and why you're here. But it's not going to do you any good. Oh, put that thing down and give yourself up, David. So you're the one who arranged for me to be a beneficiary of Carol's policy, Stand huh? Stand back. So that suspicion would fall on me when something happened to her? Of course. And give us a chance to clear out. But now it's too late. And now that you've found us out. Well? David, no. The last somebody turned up. Look out, Della! Look out! <laughs> You dirty... Pull a gun on me, will you? Easy, easy, Johnny. Control yourself. I'll knock you. Randy. Yeah. If you'll just get up off my chair. Here, here are the lights. But, David... When I flicked off the lights, Tony here made a dive for him. Here he is, wrapped up in the corner there. Yeah, and I've got his gun. Ooh, well, you got a mean left there, Johnny. Oh, I'm sorry, Randy, but... Whew. See, I thought this was out of your jurisdiction. <laughs> I get... Curious about comparing your lousy photography with the room itself, Johnny, so I sneaked in the back door. When I saw what was going on, I, well, I, I lost my head, I guess. All right, Dave, up on your feet. Oh, Johnny. Easy, Carol. Better get her out of here, Tony. Yeah, sure. And remember that crack about blood will tell? Well, I think you can prove to her that in your case, at least, whoever said it was all wet. <laughs> Well, what happens to David Sharp and Madame Morgana Morgana will be up to the courts. It's a cinch she's out of the ghost racket for a while. A long while. And, of course, Carol did make a change in her policy to cut off David. Expense account, item 20-something, cab back to New York, hotel bill, and fare back to Hartford, 4 17 35 Expense account total, eight ninety two ninety. Oh, and if you don't mind, I'll hang on to that tricky little camera and stuff in case I run into another medium well done. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's intriguing story. Next week, the tears of night matter. A fabulous necklace and a fabulous girl. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote this week's story. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Lauren Sobkin, Loreen Tuttle, Harry Bartell, Eleanor Audley, Joseph Kearns, Herb Vigran, Junius Matthews, Tony Barrett, and Sam Edwards. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.